How you doing everybody? It's uh, December the 22nd, 2009. Beautiful day I'd say, you can see sunshine and window. Beautiful. Uh, I was on the internet late last night, I was looking at the uh, world newspapers. And uh, <coughs> normally I wouldn't pay very much attention to Wall Street Journal, but I looked at a couple of articles and I want you to look at them. Three of them in particular. Put the little links up to the three of them and uh, they're fascinating articles. All right. The first one relates to uh, it's a general economic article on the recession stroke depression that's visited America and the heading of it is US hurting in wallet and in spirit and basically it deals with how the whole thing is affecting the ordinary man on the street in America in, in cities, city life. Okay, Have a read of it, it's fascinating. I think it is anyway. Uh, the next thing I want to deal with is I want to deal with uh, an article, another fascinating article again in the Wall Street Journal North Korean plane was Iran bound, it says. And what this is to do with this is to a huge Aleutian cargo plane flying from Pyongyang up in North Korea down to Tehran. Okay, in Iran. And all of a sudden it develops some sort of problem and has to land at Bangkok. And <coughs> the Thailand authorities open it up, say, open that up, we'll have a look at that. And uh, they open it up and it has hundreds of tons of weapons on board. Which were not listed as weapons; they were listed as engineering parts. But what happened was, and I cut a long story short, the bulk of them were these shoulder-held weapons, these stinger-type things for bringing down aircraft, and bringing down helicopters. And he shows the fire missiles. Okay, so that's very interesting in lieu of what's going on at the present time in Iran and the whole business. We discussed that before, so we we'll watch this space and see what happens with that over the next few months, because. Uh, I wonder how many shipments I've got through before they got to that one. We don't know, but anyway, we'll see. All right, we live in fascinating and interesting times, I tell you. The final one is another hugely fascinating thing, I think. Uh, it's headed up. Insurgents hack US drones. Now, we all know what them drone things are. You know them, they're called predators and that. They're the big, I think the predators are the big ones. The, the predators cost 10 to 15 million dollars each. 12 to 15 million dollars each. Tells you in the article. And uh, what's happened is the Afghanis, the insurgents, these lads running around, you know, these so called primitive lads. Well, they bought software somewhere. You can buy it on the internet, I believe. And it's for downloading signals, for capturing downloaded signals from satellites. Alright? And they give it a tweak, and all of a sudden, hey! They're downloading the communication system of the drone. Hey, look at this. So, $15 million plane. High te highest technology available. $25 piece of software. Computer. Bob's your uncle. That'll tell you what's happening in Afghanistan. Anyway. The final thing I want to talk about is, I want to talk about the old holy subject of the church, the organised church, specifically the Roman Catholic Church. And uh, just so people know where I'm coming from with this guy, I've said this numerous times before, I'm not some sort of a Protestant bigot from the north of Belfast and the north of Ireland, okay? Uh, even though I speak like, I tend to speak like one at times. Uh, my background is, I was educated by these people for nearly 14 years. Firstly, about De La Salle Brothers for seven years in the back streets of Belfast, West Belfast, and then in North Belfast in a diocesan college. All right, uh, for seven years. So that'll tell you where I'm coming from. Uh, as for religion, I have no objection to religion per se. I don't care about religion. People want to, but people want to believe what they believe. Best luck to people. I'm not condescending anything about religion. I have no nothing to say about religion. Organized religion and the people that run organized religion, ho oh, ho, big time. Yes, once they get involved in politics, once they get involved in the real world, yes, you better believe it. Okay. So I want to talk about the Polish Pope, Karl Wojtyla, and uh, the man's dead, and they're fast tracking it at the moment to make him a saint. And the reason they're doing this is because they're under massive propaganda, massive pressure, and this is their re propagandizing response. This is their church, the Roman Catholic Church's response to that. 
they say they're going to make this other this other fella uh, pass at twelve this end as well. They're going to fast track him. Anyway, that's another this one. But uh, <coughs> I want to talk about Voitia. In 1999, he had a bad year. 1990, December 1999. He's having a bad time. The one of the biggest and one of the most powerful archdioceses in the world was giving him serious grief. The cardinal there was a fella called Roger Mahoney, and Roger was on the blower all the time to him. And Roger wanted a deal done, and the Pope wasn't happy about the deal, I believe. But eventually, Opus Dei got on board, and they went had a word with the Pope, and the whole thing was sorted. And the deal centered. The focus of the deal was a man called Rupert Murdoch. He was the agent in the deal. The deal didn't really center on him. The deal centered on almost a hundred paedophile priests in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. Who had sodomized and raped hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of children and their families all had to be bought off now the money was never going to come from the vatican even though the vatican's bursting with money in real asset terms the vatican's probably one of the richest organizations in the world both in land and in chattel assets fine art etc but pff, forget about that the money only goes where the vatican's concerned one way that way Never goes that way. Anyway, uh, they decided that they would do they would, ha they would do a deal with Rupert Murdoch because at that particular time, both shared common interests, and the interest that Rupert Murdoch had, he had a wife that he wanted to get rid of, a wife of twenty eight or twenty four years, a Roman Catholic wife, wanted to get rid of her. Now, Rupert Murdoch is a Calvinist. He's not a Roman Catholic. He's a Calvinist. And he is the biggest pornographer in the world. He owns a, he's the biggest media mogul in the world. And a large section of his empire is given over to pornography. And he's the acknowledged biggest pornographer in the world. And <clears throat> it was a quid pro quo. The Catholic Church needed his money. And he needed the Catholic Church to remain silent about him dumping his wife. Because he wanted to marry a young one who was one of his personal assistants within the Murdoch organization okay Chinese girl all right well, maybe she was from Hong Kong or something it doesn't matter she was an oriental of some description all right and he did marry her dumped the wife just after this this all happened and then just after and the Catholic Church's arrangement was there would be no Catholic newspaper would cover his divorce there wouldn't be a word said about it no Catholic radio station and no Catholic TV station it would be zero it'd be blank all right which suited his purpose so he gave them over 10 million, the bulk of it in cash. All right. Now the upfront reason was for the construction of a church. I'll have to find the name of the church here just to tell you. The Church of Our Lady of the Angels. All right. And uh, anyway, call on story short, he gave over the money. Now ostensibly that's what, it, what the money was for. But the bulk of the money was in cash. And the bulk of the money went to buy off these families whose children have been raped and sodomized by these pedophile priests. All right? So it was a quid pro quo. And the church was so stunned and staggered that he was able to do it. I mean, he just produced 10 million like that. 10 million dollars like that. Like, like out of thin air. They, <coughs> to consolidate the whole thing, they, Mahoney insisted, as I say, and got the agreement of Opus Dei, and they went over to Rome and brought back have him been signed off by the Pope, Carl Whitea, made Rupert Murdoch a papal knight. And there was a hue and cry within the Catholic Church at the time, which only lasted about two, two months. Because they say the man was a Calvinist and he was the biggest pornographer in the world. And they made him a papal knight. And again, I have to go back to this. They had some spokesman on for. Uh, the Archdiocese, uh, this was the personal spokesman for Cardinal Roger Mahoney at the time, and he was a canon lawyer, the leading canon lawyer in America at the time. And his his statement was, but listen to this one, anything that is to the advantage and support of the Roman Catholic Church cannot be considered evil. So, they got away with it again. Anyway, at the centre, Rupert Murdoch, Pedophile priests, the other center being the Vatican and the Pope. Some Pope, some saint. We talk later. Bye.